Ever want to maximize your space? Well today I'm going to show you how to make a sofa that turns to a bed. Finding cushions for this will be the challenge, but I'll tell you what I did later on in the video. With the pillows removed, simply pull out the front of the couch, which would give you a twin size bed. But it doesn't stop there. Pull it out a little further and you also have a full size bed. But of course if you like this design, you can also just make it into a permanent bed. One of the most interesting thing about this build is the cost. It's around $135 to build this multifunction sofa that also turn into two sizes of bed. And with a few adjustments, you can go to a queen size bed easily with something like this. But obviously keep in mind that the deeper you go with it, the harder it's gonna be to find cushion. This is a versatile piece. So whether you're in college, you're in an apartment, you just wanna hook your kid up with something new, or you just have some spare space in your office or guest room that you definitely wanna take advantage of that. Maybe you have a game room, a multi-purpose area. That's where you're gonna be able to get the most out of this. I'm gonna take you guys through the step-by-step -step how to build this and I also have a set of plans down in the video description if you wanna check those out and build your own. To get started, I first cut all the lumber down to build a structure of the couch. Having a miter saw just helps speed things up, but of course you can make these cuts with a circular saw. After doing a few test fits, I went on to cut all the pieces for this build. Next, I'm gonna laminate two pieces of lumber for the back side of the couch. To make life a lot easier, I could have ran these lumbers through my joiner and my planer to clean things up and speed up the process, but I wanna show you guys that this is totally doable with regular hand tools. After stacking the lumber, I marked both pieces of wood at the same time. This will let me know where I need to drill my dowel holes. And after drilling all the holes on one side, I then went to the opposite side and then drilled the holes there. I'll also need to repeat the same thing for the second piece of lumber. Now you always want to do a dry fit to make sure that everything is good and your holes are deep enough. Once that's confirmed, then I can go ahead and add glue to the dowels and place them in the location they should go. Be sure to check the video description for additional details and things I'm using in this video. The glue I'm using set really fast, so I have to keep everything moving just so that I can get it all together before the glue start drying. You may run into a little bit of trouble putting it together, but nothing that a mallet shouldn't be able to fix. At this point, you may still see a few gaps, but this is where the clamps come in. You can add all the clamps you need, but I did feel like these four actually got the job done. With the back all clamped and glued together, I'm gonna set that off to the side and now move my focus over to the chair arm. I'll just repeat the same steps I did for the back. So moving on to chair arm number two. This one will have more room for storage and other things you'd want to place on it. To assemble this, I'm gonna use dowels, but first I'm gonna make a mark at every location that I feel like I'm going to place a dowel. When using a dowel jig, I will say find any kind of way you can to clamp it down as you drill. This is one of the best way to make sure that everything lined up and I haven't really had any problem, especially on this project with aligning things. Now, of course, when you're putting a dowel in the middle section somewhere, that can be a little tricky. So what I'm gonna do is make a mark where I think the bottom of the shelf would be, then I will go ahead and drill out some dowel holes freehand. Then I'm gonna take this dowel pin and then use that to mark the piece of wood that it's gonna go into. Using the dowel center make it super easy to mark the adjacent piece of wood. If you have a dull bit or you have a hard time keeping it straight, I would recommend using a smaller bit first to drill out the hole, then just gradually open it up to a half inch bit. To avoid any glue up headaches, just always do a dry fit first to make sure everything is gonna go together before you commit to adding wood glue. So right now I'm still working on the arm. So to assemble this arm, I'm gonna start by placing the bottom down. Then I'm gonna attach the side. I'm gonna install the next piece of wood, which is actually the shelf. Now it's time to attach the front of the arm. Apply a ton of wood glue and then line up the dowel pins. It's time to add clamps and apply pressure to the joints. Once it's all clamped, set it off to the side and allow enough time for the glue to set up. So things are gonna start taking shape now. I need to attach the side to the back. This part got quite tricky, trying to find a way to apply pressure to the joint while allowing the glue to set up. 
I took a piece of wood, clamped that to the back side of the couch. Then I used that to apply pressure to the joint. The more I tightened the outside clamp, the wood would slide. But putting a piece of sandpaper in between the two should totally prevent that. To attach the other arm, I added a few dials at the top. The reason why I didn't attach the entire side with dials is because I had the other side drying with the glue and I didn't want to disturb that and weaken the joint. So I decided I'm just going to add screws on the back side of this and fill in the hole later. Sometimes I overthink things, but I'm always trying to think of an idea or something to help me get the job done quicker and make it more efficient and easy. By taking a couple pieces of scrap wood, attaching them together, I can go ahead and set the height that I want for the seat. Use that as a template so I don't have to measure. These were all glued and screwed into place. To close this up, I'll need to add support along the front side of the sofa. The first side went in fairly easy, just installing a few pocket hole screws and the second side that was a bit of a challenge because it wasn't fully squared on one side so I was able to force it into place and get it all lined up. After removing the clamp everything felt solid but I wanted to play it safe and add a few screws on the back side of the sofa. If you have plans to build one of these and you want the back to be exposed or be visible then you probably just want to go the route of using dowels and you won't have to worry about plugging holes on the back side of the sofa. When you're dealing with rough lumber like this, you're not only going to deal with just the rough knots, but some of these knots actually have sap in them and also the lumber is rough. Some of them are not even the same size, so you're probably going to go through a decent amount of sandpaper. But the best part about it is that these lumbers are cheap and they keep the cost down. You just have to put in a bit more work to clean up the lumber. I sand down the sofa four times just so that it can be smooth to the touch. First pass I use 80, then 120, then 220, and 400 to finish it off. And with that being done, I can now add the support in the middle, which would have more than likely been in the way had I added it earlier. To fill in the holes for the screws, you can plug the hole with dowels or you can just use wood filler, which either option would work just fine. I actually had two options when it come to finishing this. I was gonna go with a dark gray, or I was just gonna use this light Danish oil on it. And I ended up going with the Danish oil because I wanted this to match the other pieces in the room. But it doesn't mean that I won't change the color at a later point. In order to make the slide out feature work, you have to skip every other slat and secure that. It's a bit of a mind game because I'm tempted to secure the next one and the next one but I have to keep it together and realize that I need to skip every other one so I had to go through this crazy method to make it happen. If you plan to use this a ton, the best thing to do is glue and screw these pieces into place because the nail can easily be removed by just pulling up one of these. This is the quickest and easiest method I could come up with to attach this 2x4 to the front. The plan is to put a couple pieces of wood on the floor so that they're in the vicinity. Then I'm going to clamp everything together as it should be when it's all done. Next I'm going to attach those loose pieces using the nail gun and once I remove that I then have an indication on where to sit the 2x4. All I need to do is line up the side to side. Now this works great on a flat surface, but being that I installed this in a room with carpet, it actually made things a little harder because the sofa is much heavier than this front and that made it a challenge to pull out. Now these slats are going to be attached to the front side of the sofa, the part that pull out. So I want to pre-drill those because the holes are going to be so close to the edge. I just want to make sure that the wood don't split. 
Now I end up going back to add wood glue, but I would suggest adding wood glue because this is a moving piece, this is gonna slide out. More than likely it's gonna get bumped side to side and just wanna make sure that these pieces are held into place as long as possible. I would suggest rounding over the corner, what are you doing with a router or you're using a sander? If those two options doesn't work for you, you can take a rasp and just simply round over the corners by hand. So I got a little excited seeing this come together, maybe a little bit because I ended up pulling this all the way out and I'm not supposed to do that. If you know how to make cushions then that's a great plus and that would totally help you build your own custom cushion. Now I can tell you that it's going to be hard to find ones in a store that's going to fit this exact space. Since this is more like a lounge chair that you just kick back on, I ended up using patio furniture cushion and also a lawn chair to fill in the entire space and I pieced things together till I was able to get something to work. This may not be a permanent solution but give you an idea and it should work for now. So this is made to fill a standard full size bed and also a twin size bed. But the goal is to have a inflatable bed that would be stored somewhere in a small location and then you can just blow it up and sit it on the bed rather than to have a mattress stashed somewhere to then place on the bed. And of course you can also use this as a standard bed where you don't convert it, you just leave it as a bed. And for the arm of the sofa, you also have this unique storage spot that you can place loose item books and other things that you need to sit somewhere. If you happen to use a full size mattress with this, the seat will get pulled out at a greater distance, leaving this open space here. But you can fix that by just cutting another piece of wood and attaching it to the side by using some corner brackets. And this can be stored directly under the sofa. If you like the design and you want to utilize it as a permanent solution for a bed, that's total doable as well. In fact, I like the way the bookshelf sit to one side of the bed. So one of the biggest challenges you're going to run into is finding the right cushion that would actually fit this space. The mattress would fit it no problem. A futon mattress actually fit this perfect. So if you just want to go ahead and grab like a futon mattress, I have some link down in the description of some of the ones I found on Amazon. Um, but that was one of the biggest concerns I want to throw at you guys is you're going to have a little issue finding cushions for this. So. Um, expect that but other than that I love the way this build came out and it's super functional so if you're not already be sure to subscribe to this channel turn on your notifications so that you never miss another upload hopefully you enjoyed this one if you did go ahead and hit that thumbs up and I love to hear your thoughts down in the comments talk to you there